Welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to do a really quick update. I'm just hoping to do this in one take. This is uh, part of the work that I'm doing for my little RTS game. Um, I have been debating back and forth a lot whether I want to do the terrain in the RTS game using a grid map, which kind of makes a lot of sense because the RTS game is basically a cell-based game um, and the grid map really allows you to place your cells nicely you know in that within the grip or your 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 assets in in a grid and um, line it all up and and you know so that, that that felt like it would make the most sense but at the same time as i was building what i've built so far i was really having a hard time when the elevation of my terrain changes is that the uh, the whole thing kind of didn't match up anymore and and while i have some ideas of how to deal with that it just felt like i was um making my life harder and i kind of decided that i needed a proper height map terrain because that still gives you basically a 2d playing field over which you um uh, you distribute your cells but then you know the cells could be at different elevation but it would still basically be a 2d you know game you know game logic for controlling the tanks and and, and you know controlling the, the units that you you have on the field but you actually have a proper 3d environment to work with um so this morning and uh, you know, I did indeed build this in a couple of hours today. Um, I decided to try something out that I've been wanting to do for a while now. And the work that I've done in the last couple of days on, on the whole whirly noise texture stuff kind of gave me, you know, enough ingredients to, um, to make this work. So what we're looking at here is a very quick and dirty, you know, lots of shortcuts taken terrain editor written fully in Godot 302. And there is, um, yeah. Anyway, um, so what you're seeing here is, uh, you know, simply a flat plane. Um, the plane actually only shows part of the terrain that we've got, uh, um, we've got in memory. Um, and that's something that, um, you know, um, there is more work to do there to to perfect that. But, you know, again, you know, I don't, I, I've only been working for this on, on this for a few hours now. Um, so it's just a start. Um, so what do we have? We have these two black boxes here. So the left box is actually our height map. Our uh, second box is our splat map. We're going to be using a, um, a three channel splat map in, uh, in this, uh, um, this uh, environment. Um, and they're both black because, you know, it's a completely empty scene. Um, I can simply pan around, you know, orbit the camera around by keeping the alt button pressed. I've made it so that if I keep the shift pressed, I can go forward and backwards. I'd probably that won't really show very well uh, um, on YouTube. Um, it'll work better once we start getting some, uh, some height data in here. And the last option that I made is the control key. When you hold that, you can go zoom in all the way to the bottom, or zoom out. You can get pretty far if you want. I still need to make it uh, um, hold the mouse. Now, both of these textures right now are uh, 4096 by 4096. So they're pretty huge textures. Um, the splat map, I'm even thinking about making larger. And the, here, I believe there is a difference in, in approach, whether you do this as a... Um, you know, as an editor or whether you do this in game. I, I personally believe that as an editor, you... You, know, you you generally have a a good development machine to work on, um, and it makes the editor much easier to write if you have you know the full map in memory. Um, but the game you might actually split that up a little bit more, and that's that's something to uh, to deal with later. Anyway, um, so four thousand ninety six by four thousand ninety six. Um, I have made my unit size one meter, so that gives me about a four square kilometers or four by four kilometer uh, map to work with, which is um, which is fine. Um, so the last bit of controls is that with the mouse wheel, I can actually make this little target smaller and bigger. And um, I haven't got anything in the UI yet that shows us what we're doing, um, but I mapped a couple of keyboards. So zero is changing the height map. Pressing one is your um, first color channel, two, second color channel, three, third color channel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, So I've got it now in, uh, in height map mode and I can simply with my left mouse, I can start drawing 
There we go. I make it a bit bigger. There we go. So I can pan around a bit. Start making it. Turn the camera around a bit. Let's move back a little bit. There we go. Um, I'm just, you know, playing around with this just to show this how this works. There we go. There we go. Now the terrain is being rendered on a um, a set of small planes. So there's a um, there's a hierarchy of planes that I'm rendering at uh, at different resolutions to get some level of detail in the background. And I don't know if this really shows very well, but um, there's this little black line in the back here, and that is one of the uh, the level of detail border lines. And I haven't done anything yet here to uh, to deal with that. That is something that uh, that I plan to uh, to do more with later on. Um, so that's that's definitely something that's not perfectly oops handled in here. Um, but anyway, I can I can keep drawing around, and and obviously I've got just got this very simple brush. Um, that I work with right now, um, but I plan to do different brush shapes. I actually plan to uh, to allow people to uh, um, to make brushes by just making a little um, black and white texture or grayscale texture that uh, that allows you to do some interesting things. And um, the right button actually subtracts, so I can uh, I can make these things go down. With the left, I can make them go back up. And uh, yeah, there we go. And as you can see, as we scroll. You know, we we get different sections of the map. You can see that right now we've only you know we've only dealt with a very small part of the map so far. Um, anyway, the other feature that we have is then uh, uh, texturing this. So I'm going to press the two key uh, to select my second um, color channel. The first color channel is this. Uh, well, um, I don't know what you would call it. It's, it's like this little broken grass or no it's not grass it's uh, like broken soil um, the colors by the way are very bluish is because the blue sky I really should be turning a, a di different background but anyway um, so I can just draw my uh, my other texture on here so this is uh, let's see if I can get a little bit closer this is a grass texture I think that I'm, I'm using right now yep that looks uh, grassy and again the color is a little bit off because I'm using this uh, this background is bluish background. Um, let's go to the number three. That's just a sort of rocky sort of thing. And uh, number four, I think, is snow. So I can draw some snow in. Now, um, this is uh, not pretty because I'm not really trying to accomplish anything here. Um, there's definitely, you know, a lot to be said for. Um, um, You know, for for doing some automated logic in here, you know, one of the things that would be really nice is actually bringing in the Warly texture logic that I uh, that I wrote earlier in the week and uh, and generate a terrain and then start you know fine tuning the terrain that uh, that we're doing here, um, having some logic in there that as you change the height of the terrain, we uh, we do some automatic logic in assigning um, different uh, different textures in our splat map. Um, but you know, uh, all in all, I'm uh, I'm pretty chuffed with uh, with a day's worth of work. Um, well, actually, half a day's worth because you know spent most of today going out with the kids. Um, so yeah, um, I just wanted to show that off. That that's something that I'm working on. You know, this is this is very early days. This is uh, you know a uh, a zero dot one version just to show uh, show that this is possible. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things that we need to fix in here to to perfect it. Um, you can see also that the mouse. I'm actually. Um, I'm actually determining the position of my target that I'm painting with based on uh, um, on where the mouse would hit the ground if the ground was all level. So that's something to fix. Um, the last thing that's really important, um, you know, I don't know if anybody's worked with these sort of things, but especially with these larger maps, you can see how fluent and fast we can update stuff, and that is because everything that you see here is all done with shaders. So these are actually two. Viewports. Well, there are little sprites showing the contents of the viewports, um, and as you, you know, apply the brush. Oh, that's the wrong button. Um, you know, the uh, we actually just render something to that viewport that then updates our height map, and then our height map is uh, is used by the, um, um, you know, by by the logic that renders, you know, by the shader that renders our our terrain. Um, the other thing, you know, you may have noticed that sometimes part of the uh, 
um, the terrain disappears. Now, of course, if I go into a mountain, then that happens. But ah, there we go. So notice here that the um, the left corner here. This is one of the borders between the different planes that I'm uh, that I'm rendering at the different levels of detail. Uh, the reason why that is disappearing is because, as far as Godot is concerned, um, our terrain is still completely flat. And that means that our culling is culling out that part of the terrain so that it doesn't render that part of the terrain because it thinks it's not on in, um, in view of the camera. So there's a, there's a little bit more logic that I need to do uh, and make sure that uh, the bounding boxes uh, make a little bit more sense to make sure that, uh, that enough of the terrain gets rendered. Anyway, that's all that, uh, that I wanted to show right now. Uh, um, this video has already gone long. Uh, longer than I expected um, and there isn't much more to show here but uh, yeah this is the start of my little terrain editor that um, I hope to soon create some terrains for my little RTS game for the little tanks to uh, run around in um, so thank you for watching hope you like this um, and until next time